Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Ekta. We are going to talk to you, to, to, to you today about a project we've been working on at MapZen, Transitland, and about how we're using design to make better, friendlier geotools. This is us at State of the Map last year at the UN in New York, looking super happy amongst all you lovely geo people. Uh, with no idea that we'll be up here this, this year speaking. I'm a software developer at MapZen with a background in urban planning. I'm working on building accessible platforms for understanding and exploring the urban environment and the ways people move through it, walking, biking, transit, and driving. I am a user experience designer at MapZen. I spend most of my time talking to people and understanding how they use our services and how our tools can better serve their needs. We are going to start today with this photo. How many people recognize where this photo was taken? Everybody. Any guesses? <laughs> That's right, Disney World. Many of you may have been to a Disneyland theme, or Disney theme park. The Disney theme pa park experience is pretty unique. A lot of people travel great distances to visit these parks all over the world. These theme parks have been su successful for so long because they draw you in and immerse you in the environment. The parks are fantastical. You can soar over London at night in a flying ship. They are absurd. You can spin around in giant teacups. And they're often seemingly magical, such as when it snows on a hot December night in Orlando, Florida. So who makes all this magic happen? There are people whose job it is to create fun to bring characters to life, surround us with these experiences so we can immerse ourselves by creating the things we see in the movies, except that we're in the movie. They're called Imagineers. People like Harriet Burns, a designer and the first woman hired to work for Walt Disney Imagineering. The Disney Imagineering department is responsible for the entire theme park experience, from coming up with new attractions to figuring out how to create illusions like fire, outer space, or even human-sized rodents that people wait in line to see. The Imagineers come from a wide variety of professional backgrounds. They are designers, artists, architects, engineers, sound artists, project managers, and more. But hold up. Why are we talking about Disney so much? Isn't this a talk about designing geotools? Don't worry, you're not in the wrong talk. Honestly, it's hard not to think about theme parks when you're working on a project with a name like Transitland. Transitland is an open source project aggregating transit data from all over the world. It started at MapZen, but it is very much a community-driven initiative. Transitland is loosely coupled with OpenStreetMap. We conflate things like bus stop locations with the nearest OSM Way ID which provides a way to work with both OpenStreetMap data and the temporal data of transit schedules. Transit networks can be fragmented with multiple operators serving one region. For example, these are a few of the operators serving the greater Seattle area. If you wanted to make a map showing all of the transit options available here, you'd have to gather data from all of these different operators. In Transitland, all of this data is available in one place, making it super easy to get a holistic view of transit coverage. This is our goal, to create a centralized place that is open and accessible to everyone, where the data is kept fresh through a healthy ecosystem of users and contributors. A place that is serious and trustworthy, but at the same time approachable and easy to use. Maybe even a little fun. In short, we wanted to make working with transit data less like this, and hopefully more like this. So let's go back to the Imagineers for a second. How would they think about this problem? To make sure that they're all meeting the high standards of epicness, that's Disney, the Imagineers adhere to a set of principles called Mickey's Ten Commandments. We recommend you check them out. Turns out creating immersive theme park experiences has a lot in common with creating experiences for the web. And we found the Imagineers' principles to be great guidelines for creating a similar user experience for Transitland. Five of those 10 principles really stood out to us, and we would like to talk about how we applied them 
to create the transatlantic playground. Principle one, know your audience. So we started out by listing all the different types of people who might be interested in contributing to or using Transatlantic. Some of them are up here. They're community builders, open data enthusiasts, transit planners, etc. But trying to make a tool that works for everyone is a foolish endeavor. So we wanted to narrow this list down to meet the needs of a few and meet them well and make them happy. It's a hard decision. Because Transatlantic is a completely open source project, we decided to focus on these three groups. The community builders, app developers, and data enthusiasts. We realized that the involvement of these groups from the very beginning would be essential for creating the engagement and start building the community we are imagining. Next is principle number two. Organize the flow of ideas, of people and ideas. Once we had narrowed down the users we would focus on, the next step was to identify their needs and create entry points to Transitland. This is a chart showing how the different parts of the Transitland system connect. At the center is the data store, the heart of Transitland, where the data lives. Transit operators release their data as a feed consisting of scheduled times, routes, and stop locations. In the data store, we have 346 feeds, most of which have come from community contributors, Using the feed registry, you can browse information about all of these feeds, their operators, and also license information. An API response to, the to, a, to a data store query for routes would look like this JSON, which shows how the data would be formatted for each route. The way this data is represented in the API response works well for some, app developers and data enthusiasts, for example. For others, though, it's hard to look at this and understand a transit network and its coverage. We knew we'd need to make another entry point that presented the transit data in a different way. An entry point that would abstract away some of the mechanics of this system and make it more comprehensible and accessible. Which brings us to the, cer the third principle we wanted to discuss. The third principle is communicate with visual literacy. I know it's a little bit weird, but think of it more like a picture's worth a thousand words. The Disney Imagineers really emphasize the use of rich imagery in their work. And what better visual to do this than a map? Um, we decided to build what we're calling the Transitland Playground to give Transitland a visual language. The playground is an interface to query and visualize Transitland data on a map. So we looked at this before. This is a snippet of the JSON response for all the transit routes in Seattle. And this one just represents one of the 282 Seattle area routes. But you get the idea. And this is what the same information looks like, represented visually, on a map, right? <laughs> Not only does it tell you a better story of transit coverage in Seattle, but it looks beautiful, and it really draws you in. Another way to look at Seattle transit data is by operator. These shapes show operator service areas and help us understand transit coverage. And then another aspect you can look at is the density of transit stops by area. This view shows number of stops as clusters from seven operators. And if you, even if you don't know much about Seattle, this map can be incredibly helpful. Principle number four is avoid overload. You don't need to make everything available to everyone all at once. In transit land, there's a way to contribute data. There's a way to check what data is available. There's an API to query for data. And with the playground, a way to view and analyze the data. If you have a lot of information, like we do at transit land, dividing it into smaller parts that are distinct and clear can help people absorb and retain information. It helps to use an analogy that people are already familiar with. We wanted to build a tool that allowed for querying Transitland without needing to know how to write a query. We used a Mad Libs or a fill in the blank approach that allows people to step through building a, qu a query, but in a clear way that doesn't require knowledge of programming. The last one we're talking about today is tell one story at a time. 
At Disneyland, you don't worry about how the ride works. You just suspend your disbelief and you know you're about to be immersed in a movie's narrative, a Disney's narrative. When trying to service the narrative of a large open source system like Transatlant, we're trying to fade the mechanics of the system into the background. The playground creates a way for people to be immersed in transit data and play with it without understanding the nuts and bolts. We intentionally design a very linear way to build queries and look at the data. In this case, looking at routes by map view focused right here in Seattle. Straightforward. In this one, all the routes serviced by Sound Transit only, one of the agencies, as you may have heard. And then in this one, all the transit stops right around here, around the university. Each of these maps tell a very different story and answer a very different question. You can use this too. This kind of approach can be used for any data set. The idea of a playground doesn't have to be limited to transit data. Any kind of data exploration can use a more visual approach. Projects like Overpass Turbo and WheelMap are good examples of other interfaces that help us understand and use OpenStreetMap data. So to recap, start by thinking about who will use the thing you are making and what they will get out of it. Don't try to design for everyone. This is especially important for open source projects like OpenStreetMap, where a community's sense of ownership of a project is essential. Don't forget you are designing for people, and offer, often you are designing for a wide variety of people, not just other developers. Organize and present the information in a familiar and understandable way. Using visuals can help you make abstract ideas more concrete. And aim to avoid overload by telling one story at a time. So, what lessons did we learn from building that playground? If you heard Catherine speak th this morning in the awesome keynote, building communities is always a work in progress. It requires care, patience, and a lot of listening. The playground has been incredibly helpful for us while importing new data into Transatlant. It's been useful for answering questions about data coverage. And then it's also provided a way for us to visualize the work we're doing in blog posts and in the press. But it's, it's also one of the main pages visited on the Transitland website, and a lot of queries have been run using the playground. But not, not all of our assumptions were right. For example, one of the features we thought would be important to people was the option to download the data after, after doing a query. Turns out, not so much. We haven't seen too many data downloads, and we are still continuing to investigate why. It was important for us to make the playground easy to understand. So we made the flow of building a query super linear, as you saw. You start with either routes, stops, or operators, and then you go deeper as you add filters, like a metro area or an operator name. The linear format, although easy, ended up being too restrictive and didn't allow for exploration. Also, people expressed the need to be able to interact with individual routes and stops on the map and get more detailed information, but couldn't do that. And of course, the playground is a very solo experience right now. We wanted people to be able to have conversations about what they're looking at and share. This first version of the playground has been very useful to us internally and has had positive reactions from the transit community. We are taking all of this into account as we continue to improve the way we visualize and understand transit data. We're modifying the way users navigate data, allowing them to freely explore the connections between operators, routes, and stops, and then focus in and get more detail. We're also making it easier to share a link to the specific data you are interested in for discussion and analysis. Finally, public transit is just one facet of a transportation network. We're expanding our vision to include understanding how public transit systems connect to other modes of transportation, such as walking, biking, and driving. So that's it. <laughs> Questions? What happens when somebody submits a new feed when it's fully integrated into the system? What would you do? I'll repeat the question. 
Um, so the question is, what happens if you were to submit a feed? Um, what happens in the process before it would come out in the other end in the playground of the API? Um, well, we take it in and we do things like conflate it with um, OSM way IDs so that you can work with OSM data and transit data. Um, we also do some other things like we add, we have a system of labeling things called a one-stop ID. And every operator, every route, and every stop gets a one-stop ID so that you can start to work with those as individual entities and start to, um, like you could use one stop would have a, one individual bus stop could have a one stop ID and then that could be shared by multiple routes. So you start to see the way different data from different operators, different agencies connects. And we do some other things like that, um, but it's, we basically just stick with the GTFS format and then add a little bit of extra stuff. Does that answer your question? Okay. Mm-hmm. They, they weren't at that point. Um, that would have been great to have that. Um, we definitely try not to think about people who aren't developers as non-technical because they are very technical. Um, people working in transportation are very technical. So we've been talking with a lot of people working in the industry, in, in different aspects of the industry. So some people who are transit agencies, um, people who work with transit data, um, just to make sure that we're building something useful. And then also that we're not overlapping with stuff that's already been built and is out there. So there's been a lot, a lot of conversation throughout. Um, we haven't had any legal issues. We do put, when, when available, we try to get the operator's own license information um, attached to the feed. And you can browse that in the part of our website called the feed registry. Um, all of the feeds that we have in there so far are publicly available. And anyone can contribute a feed. So it doesn't have to come from the agency. Um, but it, they are all from authoritative sources at this point. Thank you. All right, thank you.